Hey, Steve. How's your Monday? Hey, Scott. Hello, everybody. Hey, Steve. What's going on over there? Not much, Jamie. Thank you. How are you? Uh, you know, it was an interesting day in the market. And of course, no matter where you are, the market is the same. Um, but before we get into that stuff, just want to welcome everybody to uh, this edition of Office Hours. Thanks for joining us. And before we get rolling here, just a quick word about our disclaimer. Just want to make sure that everybody in attendance is aware of the fact that all the info that we bring you guys uh, in this webinar or any of the other webinars that we have coming at you on a weekly basis, it's all for educational purposes only. Um, simply meaning if you need investment advice, what to buy, when to buy it, when to sell it, all that good stuff, um, please seek out someone who is licensed to be able to dispense that type of info to you. Somebody like a licensed Series 7 stockbroker, uh, perhaps an uh, investment advisor. In any case, someone who's licensed to dispense buy and sell recommendations to you. All of the info that we present to you guys is for educational purposes only. And always like to take a little bit of time at the top of the hour here uh, for the new people and judging by the attendance, you know, kind of like Thursday, last Monday as well, attendance is kind of lacking right now, uh, probably because it's the middle of summer and people are doing their vacation thing and volumes are a little bit lighter. Of course, today was kind of an exception and we'll get into that shortly. Um, but just always like to take a little bit of time here at the top of the hour to showcase the community and the support that we've built around uh, the award-winning tech that is TI. And if you haven't heard about Barry and the trading room already, probably should get in there and check it out. Um, the trading room is free to everybody that comes along. You don't even necessarily have to be a subscriber to get in there and see what our trading room is all about. Barry does a fantastic job at moderating a room that could have anywhere between three and 500 people in it. Um, traders from all skill sets in there, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. But the bottom line is for zero dollars and zero cents, it is a great deal. And Barry opens the doors 30 minutes before each and every open. So if you haven't been taking advantage of that, by all means, probably in your best interest to do so. Of course, the 5 p.m. Eastern webinars on Monday, you get myself and Steve Ride Shotgun with me. Steve's going to take the helm on Tuesdays with the trade of the week. And Mr. Anley Linloff is going to ride shotgun with him. Change it up just a little bit on good old hump day. On Wednesdays, we bring in our CEO and founder, Dan Merkin, along with Brad Williams, Always interesting with those two, typically giving you peaks way far in advance of things that might be coming down the developmental pipeline. Andy's going to reclaim the steering wheel on Thursdays with the trading studio. I'm going to ride shotgun with him. And of course, our ever popular daily support session, which is every weekday, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. A great place to come get anything, any questions TI related answered in a real time environment, the real time visuals. Um, we have a different person in there each and every day of the week to keep it interesting. So, the next slide show you how to get to that support session. And there we have it trade ideas.com backslash live. That is a static address, it takes you to our YouTube channel. And so, easy part about it is once you get there, just bookmark it. For easy navigation getting back to it each and every time uh, once again monday through friday 12 p.m to 1 p.m eastern in addition to our webinar circuit we do have some really great tutorials that you can watch on demand uh, on our youtube channel uh, the ti university is an excellent four-part video series especially if you're brand new if you're brand new to the product you will get a lot out of 101 and 201. And of course, we take it a step, couple of steps further with uh, intermediate and advanced as well. But especially if you're brand new, 101 and 201 will really help you get over the learning curve a lot quicker than not watching these videos. So all you have to do to access these videos is just navigate over to YouTube, do a search for the Trade Ideas channel. Once you're in the channel, search for TI University. These should come right up easy peasy. All righty. So here we are going to talk about, uh, well, what we normally do at the top of the hour here, typically give the 
give the steering wheel over to Steve and let him talk about the overall move in the market. So, Steve, if you're ready for it, I guess I'll kick it on over to you. Okay. All right. First off, I do want to say I talked to Brad. Uh, hopefully, this bad tick. That's that's kind of a bad tick there. That really shouldn't be that high. It should be kind of more like that on the the S and I was wondering about that um, myself. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it was kind of funny. I saw my high low ticker for S and P spy go to high, and I thought, wait a minute, they didn't go to high. It was a bad tick that was in there. And uh, anyway, that's the real look. But I think the real story again is um, is it going to be different this time <laughs> as opposed to these periods? in time which the 50 period moving average was so solid in support and you know if that gives then you know pretty much got a lot of uh, space down here before you get uh, to other at least moving averages levels of critical moving averages but in terms of maybe a level of shelf you know there's nothing wrong with saying uh, pull back down and test that low low 400s below 400s level that is definitely in the cards if price action feels like it. I mean, it's normal when you consider we've come from a move all the way down here, all the way up here, we can give back one third easily and we're still in a nice uptrend for the most part. But I don't know, we'll see. I do know that um, as the week went on last week, uh, I got more and more uh, less bullish and more and more bearish, quite honestly. I even put a tweet out there on my social media on Friday that about some VIX going into the weekend. I just don't like what I'm seeing out there. Nothing is is working for the most part. There's a lot of technical reasons that would say, you know, let's see, we can just do it right now. Um, let's go ahead and pop that in there. We look at, look at an RSI indicator. You start to see what's called divergence. Um, and you never really want to see um, a market that is uh, making new highs in price but making a new lower highs in momentum. Um, let's look at the NASDAQ. It might even be more egregious. Uh, no, not, not quite, mostly in the S&P. So there was, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of divergence in there. Um, there was another funny thing on, uh, not funny, but another interesting thing on Friday that I, I pointed out on Twitter as well. Let me remove that RSI. <clears throat> And that uh, was, you know, something I don't look at a whole lot, but the Dow really caught my eye on Friday, and it caught my eye for, come on, let me get that candle in there, that candle right there. That's like the mother of all engulfing candles. I mean, it took out the high, um, took out the low, and did so with one big solid red covering dark cloud candle. You know, finishing the week off on that, very much overbought. Um, you know, another thing I'll add to the mix here that I wasn't liking in terms of not being bullish and kind of being defensive is uh, you know, the channel in which we had found ourselves in, in the S&P. We were just very much on the high end of our channel. And you don't want to be establishing a whole lot of new positions up here. Also, a bearish engulfing candle over there in the S&P. Uh, if you consider how the high and low of this candle completely engulfed the day prior um typically those can be kind of ominous we'll see what happens but then we came into today followed up with a giant volume candle a perfect test of the 50-day moving average and so let's just see where we go from here i still don't have any long positions i've got a couple of uh, volatility etf things working in case things do get a little bit more volatile but those lines i just drew there are really kind of what i expect uh over the next couple of days maybe we go sideways maybe we bounce up into the armpit that's what I call it, the declining moving averages. Or maybe we just have another fun overnight session and gap down lower. I don't know. But um, I'm very defensive right now. It's just, it's, it's been a nice run. Um, there's no reason to think that we can't give back at least a, a decent portion of what we started back here uh, in the middle of COVID. That's, that's quite the run. So even that orange line in the bigger scheme of things, it's, that's a normal market. You know, bring it on. So... That's what I'm looking at over here. I don't really see any things of interest in terms of the uh, sectors, but um, for those that were paying attention, the trade of the week is cash. Everything I was just saying, as I was noticing going into the weekend, there was no real good scans lighting up either as well. I mean, the, uh, the A table had two, two scans on there. There's just, there's not a lot of pickings right now. And um, I'm pretty comfortable with um, reminding people that uh, 
just going to cash on the sidelines can be a position in and of to itself. So that's where we are this week. Summer doldrums, and that's it. Back to you, Jamie. Yep, summer doldrums with a little bit of surprise volume coming in, but uh, I do like the fact that the uh, the 50 period uh, held. So, thank you very much, Steve. Mm -hmm. Grab it back from here. Okay, you should have eyes back on my desktop there. And I was just responding to Lou's question there. Sure, Lou, if it's a general question and I, I have the knowledge to answer it here, I certainly will. If it's too complex, you'll probably have to send that one into info at trade-ideas.com as well. Um, okay, back to where we were going initially. Um, thank you very much for that, Steve. Um, you know, it was kind of interesting this morning because after the first 15 minutes when I consulted my favorite compare count window, which is simply looking for those who have not seen or been exposed to this window in the past. Uh, the compare count window is something that we can easily access from you. And one, two, three, four, fifth window down from the top, which coincidentally, uh, this is the order that all the windows came into existence. So compare counts were the fifth window uh, that we ever created. Allowing, allowing us to keep count of things that we, well, would feel important to keep count of. And the the origin of this window was, you know, the tick, advancers versus decliners across the big board, which is pretty general. Um, but now with the compare count windows, we can basically create any inverse strategy with a filter set, without a filter set, and track it within a specific time period. So I typically look at anything over a market cap of $4 billion and look at the stocks with a market cap in excess of 4 billion, hitting highs and lows in the opening 15 minutes, sometimes, but not all the time. That can give me an idea of what to expect for the rest of the session. But typically I like to see a bias one way or the other of 55%, whether that be to the upside or the downside. And 55 is just kind of the uh, line in the sand. Um, like to see them closer to 60 or hopefully even above 60. But as we can see from this screenshot, this is what it looked like after the first 15 minutes today. 51%, uh, okay. Ironically, that's exactly what it was last Monday as well. And when we see compare count readings like this, we just have to say, well, uh, you know, from my experience, anything is possible, all right? And we sure got that today. So even though it was just 1% to the downside, taking a look at the SPY here, first 5, 10, 15, this, these are five minute candles. After that first 15 minutes, we did take a little leg down only to chop around for the rest of the session and make it right back up to the point almost where that 15 minute, uh, uh, well, I'd have to say, we'd have to make it back up here. So almost to that second little tranche right there. Bottom line is that mm, this day, <laughs> for most of the trading day, was not that easy to play. Um, most of the steam got taken out of everything in the nice juicy gap here uh, that we, we experienced, and that is typical. Anytime we have a big gap up, a lot of the times it takes the steam out of the things that want to go up and vice versa on the downside. So it was kind of no surprise to see a lot of the action outside of Holly, uh, which we're going to look at here in just a moment, the AI, uh, that I saw most of the opportunities today in the simpler patterns that I look for to the upside. Um, and we'll look at some of those stocks a little bit later on. So real quick here, let's go ahead and dive into Holly, although it wasn't the uh, most magnificent performance, um, but she held her own and was up slightly. Um, nothing to write home about there. As you can see, let's see, where'd my pen disappear to? There it is. Give me one second here, ladies and gents. I accidentally minimized my questions panel. All right, there we go. All right, so Holly only had seven signals. If we look over here on the toolbar, or excuse me, the channel bar, one from NEO, two from Holly 2.0, and then four from NEO. 
being the most active today. Um, so typically, and it's kind of been feast or famine as of late, because today, not really a whole lot of conservative versus moderate spread. And I will uh, take the time to explain the difference in these two when we get to that part, for those of you who might not be familiar with it. Um, conservative versus moderate spread and how we might be able to capture some of that. Uh, trade arounds, typically dealing with things that have been stopped out, but having that stop level act more or less as a pivot point uh, in which we can make a second entry. Uh, or add-ons. Not a whole lot of good add-on opportunities uh, today. Let's see. I don't know how I let that guy slide in there. But I deleted this one. So we're just going to have to ignore this little comment at the bottom here. That was from a Holly Pryor. Um, in any case, let's go ahead and get into the Holly trading blotter for today. Okay. So you can see the columns up here. I've got conservative profit. I've got moderate profit as well. And a lot of the times at the close, we'll see a spread between conservative and moderate. Of course, the larger number needs to be over here in the moderate column. Um, for that spread to be valid. And just quickly looking here, we got a little bit of spread in CRTD from 33.28 to 81.81. And we've got a little bit of spread in the PMVP trade as well. Holly closing that out in profit save mode over here. Same thing goes for CRTD. Uh, making a flat here, but holding to the close, we could have gleaned a whopping $63. Now, a quick note here, a lot of you are already aware of this, but in case you're new, the values that you see over here of the AI performance are based around 100 shares per trade, whereas the numbers that you're seeing right here are all based around risking $100 per trade. And if I hit tools, options, come over here, you can see my AI trade size, not using dollars, not using shares per trade, but using $100 risk based on stop loss. So we can see here, risking 100 bucks in moderate, you're only making a little bit more, about 20, 24% more uh, to be exact, uh, holding all day versus what we had on ZGNX here, which was a quick profit target. Um, well, that actually that one was not quick. The one I'm thinking about was the first one out of the shoot today, CYTK. I tell you what, let's just go ahead and take a look at that because even if you were trading this one robotically, uh, you would have been hard pressed to get the fill. This was a very fast mover here. Trying to expand this out a little bit so you can see and not be so jumbled up here. But CYTK was quick. I mean, we got the buy signal coming in right here. 28.18, as we can see from the blue box right here. And pretty much in the same candle, uh, we got a profit target hit of 29.25. Of course, that was very close to the open here. We can see the first trade in CYTK came five minutes and seven seconds after the open. So it was very quick. Uh, and of course, it wasn't able to maintain these levels. Market kind of sucked it back down as well. Um, but that's why we're seeing target hit, conservative profit, nice and juicy over here with 2R, risking $100 to make 200. Uh, but getting back to the point here, conservative versus moderate spread. All right, let's take a look at the CRTD. Uh, this one was also a long. Buy coming along at 372. I tell you what here. Let me take a look at something over here because I just realized something here. I was looking at my entry price, 372, okay, and I had 374, so I only took about two cents slippage in CRTD here. Um, looks like a huge move, but when I click back on here, we can see not a bad entry. What everybody wants to see, a nice big run up, quickly followed by a nice downturn, all right? And we can uh, see that the target was hit, right? Oops, I tell you, I cannot click today. Profit save, okay? As the thing came back down, Holly closed it out. The shaded area right here represents the time spent in the trade. 
um, under conservative profit here. Now, if we would have held this, sure, by the end of the day, we would have been higher than where the AI closed the trade out, but look what we would have had to endure here, all right? We would have had to watch it go all the way back to flat, stay underwater a little bit, even more underwater here. Of course, it was a pretty wide stop on a small dollar stock, never getting even halfway down to the stop area. Um, but it's gonna be hard for most people to sit through this pretty much all day in the hopes that it was going to reclaim uh, some higher levels. So yes, there is some spread there, not not quite 3%, a little over 2% from $33 to 81, 81. Um, but it would not have been an easy thing to sit here. Um, so even though there is spread there, realistically in the face of today's market, probably not the easiest trade to endure, hoping for that rebound at the close. Now let's take a look at PMVP. Boy, what a nice looking daily chart here. And of course I'm being facetious. Um, buy coming at 3404, right where we can see the blue line here. Um, you know, hey, it's like a jigsaw, a jigsaw up and down, up and down, um, or a seesaw, I should say, not a jigsaw. Flatting the trade pretty much, getting out right here, as we can see from the uh, shaded area, right there is where she pulled the, pulls the plug for a flat. All we had to do was just kind of trust that hard stop here. Uh, not near as hard to sit in this one as the CRTD because we just kind of went up a little bit, came back down to the entry level. And then in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, 30 minutes of the day, we did go back to highs. Of course, not near of a as big of a wiggle as we would have had to sit in the CRTD, but still not easy to do in the face of today's little uh, red wave that was upon us. Um, so even though it is minuscule, that is some spread between conservative and moderate profit here. But hey, on a day like today, whether you got some of that or not, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the days when we have a nice green day, a um, little uptrend, it's a lot easier to sit these things today, you know, flip a coin pretty much. Other than that, you know, looking at the totals over here with Holly, and even if we cycle through the risk parameters on my settings here, risking $100 per trade, look down here, $133. When we're risking $100 per trade on seven trades, eh, it's green, but like I said, it's nothing to write home about. If we were accepting moderate risk in the whole, 130 bucks, and this also does not account for any slippage that we may have taken on our entries, and aggressive profit, well, wasn't the day to be aggressive, now was it? Uh, just holding and hoping, we would not have done too well at all today. We would have been down about 600 bucks, risking $100 per trade. So I've gotten in the habit as of late, on Mondays and Fridays, I'm more of a conservative guy. Uh, typically, if the bigger days are going to come lately, it's going to be either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Now, there's no rhyme or reason to that. It's just been my observation as of late, um, but uh, seems to be holding up today. Conservative did win out today when the other two risk modes were negative. All right, just taking a look at the questions panel here. Looks like you're on top of it, Steve. Let me know if I need to to address anything. All right, so that's pretty much it for Holly today. I, I do need to talk about the lack of, well, based on the charts that we just looked at, there weren't really any nice levels of consolidation. I uh, didn't bring up any, any good levels there that we could have felt really confident about a trade and added to that position. Um, market conditions, the main reason why chart pattern is secondary on that. Um, but typically we would have at least on one, two, three, almost a 50% stop out rate today. We would have a pretty good example of a trade around. Um, but we can see here, we lost a hundred bucks here on the CYTK trade, which there was a double entry on CYTK. The first one, getting that profit target hit pretty quickly. Everybody was like, yay. Um, but the second one, buying the pullback, 
was a stop out. So if you took both of those trades, you only made half of what you see up here, assuming you got out right when the AI did. Um, but we can see on that second entry here, if we would have held that thing and gotten stubborn, instead of losing 100 bucks, we would have been down 5X. Same thing on the flexing. Uh, on this one, had we gotten stubborn and not taken the hit, we would have lost an extra $70. And boy, I tell you, I watched this one unfold in real time. It took a long time for this one to stop out. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, entry over here, in the money for a little bit, back up, all the way back down to the entry line, and was watching this one as this stop unfolded. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, Jamie, we got the double button on Brokerage Plus. I bet this one would be a good one to go ahead and hit that double button but you're probably gonna have to use a stop a little bit outside of that designated stop area. After all that thinking and almost hitting it, guess what I did? I said, you know what? I'm not pushing anything today. I'm just gonna sit with what I got. If it works, great. I'm just, I'm just not that motivated. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Went a little bit past that excursion or that stop loss area there with some nice wicks. And this is a perfect example of a trade around. I was just a little dismayed today. I didn't hit the button. Hindsight's always 2020. It would have worked like a charm. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But it's uncanny how, you know, right up at that stop level, a couple of wicks through, acted perfectly as a pivot point. Um, so whether you were in it and doubled, doubled it up up here, or whether you were not in it, saw the stop get hit, watched how it watched how the stock reacted around the pivot area. Plenty of time to make a short entry up here, get a better price than the AI, and make some nice coin on the down move. Um, but that was a pretty good example of a trade around. We can see here, only $8.52 would have been made from the original entry, but we had a nice little gap here between the stop level of, what is that, 1521. So, you know, once again, not anything to write home about, only about 50 cents in between that stop area and down here, but a nice trade around nonetheless. And that's it for the Holly. Not the, not exactly a bang up performance, a decent trade around, a tiny, tiny bit of conservative, moderate spread. Uh, but when it comes to add-ons today, there just weren't really any nice setups that I would have felt good about uh, adding to positions on the AI trades for today. All right, so that's Holly out of the way. And you know, it sure is interesting because a lot of the things we've talked about, a lot of the trades that I like to showcase in just about every Monday webinar are some of the more simple patterns. And for those of you who attend on the regulars, you know that one of my favorite simple patterns because of its simplicity is the opening range breaks, okay? These can occur to the upside and the downside. And of course, Intraday trading, we know, is the harder of, well, technically, trying to trade intraday is going to be more difficult for a litany of reasons, okay? Um, swing trading has been the path of least resistance, it seems, up until recently, and even swing trading is getting a little bit more difficult, as Steve can attest um, as well. Trading in general is not easy, okay? Um, but we don't have to fight the algos uh, as much as we do on, on swing trades as we do intraday because those things can be quite nasty. That trade around in this stock right here is the perfect testament to that. They just get you out by a hair up here and then the trade goes your way, all right? And this is rampant uh, in the day trading game, the intraday game. However, I was, surprised to see on a down day today, of course, most of the move was in the gap, right? Um, but we did have a little bit of downside action here. But when it comes to my two favorite windows for finding high volume stocks and finding these opening range breakouts to the upside and to the downside, uh, I probably had over 200 unique symbols coming through this one. My turbo breaks up, looking at relative volume as opposed to one minute volume. So we're gonna take a look at some of the plays that came through there. And I was still pretty surprised at some of the quality that can be found. Now it's 
a lot harder to find the quality. You have to be very attentive. But hey, that's the name of the game. We filter through a lot of garbage as traders to find the little pearls that are hiding inside of all of the digital garbage that might be out there. So all the symbols that we're about to look at here were spawned from this little upside ticker here, turbo breaks up relative volume. Now the reason it's called relative volume is because the original version of turbo breaks had pretty much the same configuration with the exception of, instead of using relative volume as we're doing here with a minimum of three, I was focusing on high one minute volume as the high was being achieved, okay? I like this version a lot better because typically there aren't near as many symbols coming through. Just gives me a pared down version of, of a universe of symbols to look at. Um, so the characteristics are being met and then all we have to do is look and see if the pattern that I, that I we, you are searching for is being met. So a great example of one today was ASPU. Okay, and here we can see the entire day on the five minute intraday time frame. Um, ASPU bucking the trend. Everything is pretty much gapping down. ASPU got a little gap up here. After the gap for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 40 minutes, we just get this nice little tight consolidation area before this upper end of the range is broken. So clearly we can see the low had been put in here, high had been put in back here, the stock had been range bound, and then we get a crack right here. What has to happen if we're breaking out of this range? Stock has to hit a high. That's why we use new high for the upside, new low for the downside. So this would have been a perfect time Opening range break occurring right here, uh, trade right here. To assess risk on these trades, we look at the prior 15 minute low, not including the entry bar, which is here. So 5, 10, 15, there's the lowest point. Therefore, that is our risk on that trade. Now, this one took a little bit of time to get going here. Kind of just hemmed and hot around the entry line. Very similar to what we see some of the Holly trades do from time to time. A little bit of an excursion down here but doesn't get us out, only to finally kick into gear. We can see the corresponding volume kick in, gets the party started, and then we had a nice move higher on ASPU today. So nice chart action. Uh, move looks pretty big, but only you know from this level here, 611, topping out at 670. So not a bad percentage move, 60 cents on a $6 stock. Hey, I'll take that every time. Um, so just a really clean opening range break on ASPU today. Didn't really have to sweat it that much. And in the face of a red market, you got some nice upside action on that. Of course, if we look over here at the daily, um, once we got into this area right here, you know, you might might have thought, hey, we're, we're going to stop right here. Where did that candle open, actually? Yeah, we opened at 601. So at the bottom of this candle, um, this area here, act like it wasn't even there. We went all the way to the top of that range there. So not a bad move on ASPU coming out of the turbo breaks up relative volume ticker. And I will be sharing these uh, by you. I've already got them all queued up before we're done today. I will gladly drop the cloud links in uh, before we're done here. All right, moving right along. Next one out of this ticker was O A O U T A out. And keeping in tradition, we did get a little bit of a gap down here. Uh, but after that first five minute wick was put in, of course I could put the low down here for playing by the rules. But a lot of the times it's up to you. It's up to, you know, each and every symbol is gonna be different. A lot of people prefer candle bodies. Um, but even if we did crank the low way down here on that opening five minute wick, we still got pretty much the same thing. Here's the high. I still doesn't get penetrated till this level right here. Signal coming in about 27.18. Um, once again, to assess risk, not including the entry candle, we're just gonna look at the lowest point in the prior 15 minutes, one, two, three. That's why I had this up here. That is the risk level, okay? Not near as juicy as ASPU was, but still we could probably stick this risk level into the reward level. 
a little over, I don't know, maybe even three times there. Um, so kind of uh, took about 20 minutes for this thing to get a little bit of moxie here to get going. Got pretty close down to our risk level, a little over halfway uh, before finally popping through here. So from this original 2719 area here, we had a run all the way up to the 28, almost $29 level there. I think the high on that candle was 28.99, right? So from 2719, a nice buck 80 move uh, intraday here. And once again, pretty amazing upside activity from AOUT today in the face of this red market. Um, so not a bad percentage gain out of AOUT as well. All right, and the next one, of course, these guys come in all shapes and sizes, okay? Now, a lot of people cringe when they see a low dollar stock, but hey, a move is a move. It doesn't really matter how much it costs. If I can execute on it uh, and I see this little tight pattern here, um, the question would be, why not take a stab at it, all right? Um, a move is a move is a move. Once again, little gap down, little consolidation period here that's easily to define. We get the signal coming out about 58 cents. This thing just behaves like a good stock should. Never even really, you know, comes down here and tests these stop levels here. You may be asking yourself, well, why is that at the bottom of the entry candle? Because pretty much these three candles before it making up to 15 minutes, that low is the same. So 58 cents all the way up to 66 cents, almost you know, eight cents on a 60 cent stock. Once again, a nice percentage move. Price is really irrelevant. You know, The only time I typically don't trade a stock is if it's too much, and then I still might tack on a few shares. Um, but a lot of people stay away from the small stocks, but hey, especially in a market like this, anything that has some upside momentum and very little risk, as we can see right here, you know, I'm more of the uh, mindset of, well, why not, okay? 8% uh, move is 8%. doesn't matter if the stock's a dollar, $100, or 50 cents. Um, not a bad move. Quite the risk to reward ratio here. Don't know exactly what that might be. All I know is it's a very good percentage uh, move on the OGEN. So once again, all shapes and sizes. Of course, if you really do hate the low dollar stocks, you can always pop in your favorite minimum. Now we've taken a look at three that worked. How about we take a look at one that didn't work? Because the beautiful thing about these, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's all relevant to the area of consolidation before um, the break occurs. If we have a very nice tight area of consolidation, as we can see in these prior three plays, then we know our risk is going to be minimal. CUK, let's see, I think my, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm really sorry. I don't know if you can hear that background noise, uh, but it appears to be a cat potentially throwing up a hairball back there. So hopefully you can't hear that, but if you can, I apologize. All right, here we are taking a look at Cuck which I really liked when it first came out because we have the, you know, we've got kind of this rounded bottom. Of course, I can't draw very well. Uh, this rounded bottom leading up to uh, this break right here, which a lot of people like, including myself. And we do get a good signal here. We get the signal coming out right about, you know, well, where's my pointer again? Um, right about the 1804, just over the whole number on top of it too. And we all know how some stocks like to react around whole numbers. Looked really good, okay? Got off to a good start, got up a little bit, maybe uh, 20 cents or so. But hey, stock gods just weren't having an up move in cock today. And we slowly, took a while to do it, um, but we got ground back down. Push this back up to my risk level because this being the candle, one, two, three, this was my risk level here. Um, took most of the day, but it did stop us out, okay? Now, this one was a little bit more stretched out because we had the rounded bottom um, than the prior ones that we looked at here. But even with this little failed uh, breakout here, eh, 
we didn't get taken to the cleaners too bad. We lost 34 cents. Okay. Um, you know, if Cuckwater would have wanted to make a run to close a good majority of that gap, then, you know, almost a point would have been on the table there, um, but not the case. And, you know, so we could say potential R was about 90 cents and we lost about 34 cents approximately, could be 35, could be 33. So just want to give you guys an example of what happens when one doesn't work um, because we're looking at the prior 15 minutes, one, two, three, you know, it's not a high risk trade. It doesn't work. We lose 34 cents, no harm, no foul. Plenty of other good quality ones out there uh, that did follow through. So as I said, I was a little surprised to see the number of symbols coming through here um, today, probably close to, I don't know, about 150 uh, or so. And if we were to take a look at all the ones coming through the downside, there were hardly, you know, that was hard for us to find even one decent setup um, on the downside once today. Now, having said that regarding, or, you know, having told you guys this is where I'm getting uh, the setups from. I was also surprised to see a lot of things coming through the turbo up family no resistance because these stocks are hitting all time highs. Okay. And granted, there's not a gazillion of them. Of course, we've been seeing MRNA uh, do its thing. And I think we all know the reason behind that. Uh, Moderna, being one of the main MRNA vaccine producers, uh, just seems to be having its day in the sun. Um, but this one caught my eye earlier in the day, and it took a while to develop, but it still had some pretty decent potential. And it's AEHR enjoying a nice little gap up um, today. And opening high was right here, took a little excursion down here and based out for a while. based out here again, and then made a run all the way back up, finally cracked the high right about here, as we can see. And then, you know, uh, let's see, 509 is where that break occurred. And this little guy had a run all the way up. Looks like it closed right about there at 668. So a very nice percentage run in AEHR. And what's odd about that is this window has been pretty dry, even when we were popping new highs. Haven't been seeing a lot of good setups coming through here. So I think I added that window to my list as well. Yes, I did. So when I drop these links, you'll have access to Turbo Up with relative volume, Turbo Down, and the Turbo Family, no resistance. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you guys didn't hear the noise pollution. Um, maybe my noise canceling mic is, is doing its job here. All right, so it is a summer day, content's a little light. We got some entertainment, some downside fireworks from uh, from the market today. But even so, the opening range breaks, if the market is a forest and all the different setups that we like to see are animals, then the opening range breaks are definitely one of the most common animals out there, like a rabbit or a squirrel. I mean. Whatever forest you go to, you know you're going to see tons of those little critters, and these are no exception. You know, even when the market is doing this to us, this is proof that there were still plenty of decent upside opportunities today. Not saying that there was no downside uh, activity today, but hey, check out Holly's blotter one more time. Everybody sees the red, thinking that well, this is the day that the shorts are going to kill it. Yeah, if we didn't have most of the steam taken out of the market on the gap perhaps that would be the case, right? But out of the three shorts that were kicked out today, look, two of them failed. One of them turned in a decent profit. The other two trades, you know, out of the three trades that are showing profit here, two of them on the long side, okay? So we've even got kind of confirmation of my little theory here from the statistical model that is Holly. All right, so let me get these links dropped in. And hopefully this works. All right, so there you should have them all three at once. Turbo up, turbo down, and turbo up, no resistance, should all be in there.
And by you, let me see your question here. I can't expand my questions panel out a little bit here. So you're looking at the orb in five minutes time frame. Is it five minute opening range breakout or 15? No, 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 no. These can occur at any time of the day. Okay. Um, I just had mine on five minute candles here, just so we can see, you know, the level, you know, the, the time of consolidation here. So for example, on AOUT, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight five-minute candles. So this occurred 40 minutes into the open, right? Um, I just like having five-minute candles here lately on these because you can see more detail, right? But if we switch this to 15-minute, you can see the pattern is the same. We just have three candles here, right? Instead of eight five-minute candles, we'd have roughly three 15 minute candles. So the pattern is the pattern. I just like a little more detail, right? It just makes it easier for me to, you know, it's just a personal preference. But the thing about the opening range breaks, well, kind of overshot that. <laughs> I mean, it just looks, you know, more candles to observe here. Uh, but for example, on this guy right here, these can occur at any time of the day. You know, this one took most of the day before it got to the actual breakout level. So your intraday time frame is up to you as far as the candles that you want to watch. But an opening range break can happen. Well, you know, we've got opening range break alerts. Even for, I believe the lowest is one minute. But I mean, <laughs> one minute opening range break, that's a little fast even for me, right? If we're looking at 15 minute opening range breaks, well then we'd be limited to five one minute, uh, excuse me, three five minute candles or watching a lower time frame of candles even below five, three, two, one. Um, I just like to give things a little time to develop because the the zigs and the zags in the opening 15 minutes can can be pretty vicious, all right? So we've got alerts for these things anywhere between one minute and 60 minutes. But once you get outside of 60 minutes, you're on your own, right? It might take 70 minutes to develop. So your choice of intraday candles is simply personal preference. Um, five seems to get the job done without adding too much. And typically after the first hour or so, I will switch to a 15 minute candle because if they haven't gone yet, you know, and it's an hour past the open, at least we've got four 15 minute candles to uh, to look at there. <laughs> You're right, Gabrielle, one minute, one minute orb is an oxymoron. Uh, John, we don't have an existing trial period, uh, so to speak of, but we do have a test drive coming up. Um, Scott might be able to give you the exact dates on the way out. Uh, the, the, the exact days are slipping my mind right now. Um, but that's for people that want to test out the product. And the way we do it is we give you two free weeks. We're not, not free. Scratch that. Two weeks of access. And I believe on the upcoming test drive, it's going to be for $11 and 11 cents. You'll get access to the product for two full weeks and that's full functionality. So that's the way we handle uh, you know, people who want to test out the software. So stay tuned for that. Speaking of Scott, if you're ready to walk us out and tell everybody how they can save a little bit of money on a new sub or an upgrade, we're ready for you. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, that uh, we'll be sending out information about the test drive to all of our lists later this week. Um, it's going to be the 9th to the 20th. So stay tuned for that information. Um, we got a new ebook recently released, uh, Favorite Strategy Indicators by our Director of Software Development. So go to tradeideas.com slash strategy to grab that free ebook. Also got a podcast. Hopefully have some new eps out sometime soon. But do check out the interviews that we've conducted earlier this year and uh, add us as a subscription. So as soon as we pop a new one out there, it appears in your feed. 
Use the code SUNSHINE to save 15% off any new subscription or upgrade today. So grab that code if you want to get started. And you can find Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. You can find Steve at TISTG. We've also got at Trade Ideas and some other handles. Uh, Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to follow and share stuff with your friends. And if you have any questions, email info at tradeideas.com. That goes to our help desk and gets you the support you need. Uh, so the recording of the session will be up later on tonight. And uh, you get an email reminder tomorrow telling you how to find it in our YouTube playlist. So thanks, Jamie and Steve. Thank you all. Have a nice one. Thanks, everybody. May you have a green Tuesday, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.